Today we're talking all about what compliant wheels are, how you can use one to have a robot pick something off of the ground, and how you can have it efficiently pick up a ball-shaped object. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And today we're going to go through a common type of robotic intake that allows you to pick something up on the ground, something like a compliant wheel intake. We'll talk about it ins and outs, when you might want to use one, some improvements you can make to my current design, and then I'll show you some of it in action. So first things first, what exactly is a compliant wheel? All a compliant wheel is, it's effectively just a squishy wheel. That's what we in engineering call something called compliance, where there's just a little bit of extra give to that system. Now, this is a compliant wheel from Swift Robotics. Uh, you can also use compliant wheels from Antimark, Rev Robotics, Go Build It. Any of these really work the same. These Swift ones are quite squishy. It just happens to be what I have on hand. Do I think it's the best one? No, but it's also a good compliant wheel. Nice thing about these ones, you can actually clip these little corners here. And you also have a boot kicker, which is a separate type of compliant wheel. So the real purpose of a compliant wheel intake, what it does well is when these wheels start spinning quite quickly, you're able to funnel an object up and into your robot. Now on this design here, this is actually almost a bit of a double compliance because if I were to grab an artifact or a ball like this and were to grab it in, not only do the wheels themselves squish, but my entire bar is capable of moving up and down. And this entire bar is constrained here by a rubber band that is able to hold it back down and in place. So it actually ends up giving me a bit of double compliance in this system. And what ends up happening is as I come and push in, you'll see that not only is the wheel itself squishing, but the entire bar wants to lift up as that ball comes in. And having that bar lift up is really helpful because depending on what the angle of your ramp is, this bar is able to automatically adjust to where that angle of the ramp is. And let's see if we can get a little bit of a closer view on that. So as you see here, we actually start to squish that ball, that compliant wheel in. And when the compliant wheel can't squish anymore, it actually lifts the whole ramp up. So it's actually a pretty slick little design in that respect to be able to get it up and going along. So compliant wheel intakes are really nice because it means that you don't have to be absolutely pinpoint accurate on your intakes or on your heights because the amount of compression, the amount of squish that you place upon one of these balls really does affect your ability to pick one of these up and in. Now, in terms of the motor that you want running this thing, I have a ultra planetary from Rev. It's running on a five to one ratio because my wheels are running at 450 RPM. And you typically want your intake running at twice the speed of your wheels. So you can grab the game element and then own that element. So this is spinning at about 1200 RPM whereas these are spinning about 450. I'd like to actually lower this a little bit to get about 900. I can get a little bit of extra torque on the system but it works pretty well for what it is that it needs to do. Now for the compliance of my wheel, the shore hardness, I tend to favor more squishy wheels because it tends to make things a little bit simpler, be able to grab things on. Um, you may also be tempted to print these out of something like TPU, which does work for the compliance section. The problem with TPU is it's not quite as grippy as something like a silicon or silicone wheel might be, uh, which is why I tend to favor silicone wheels uh, over something like a TPU wheel. Another thing that works well about this design here is I've got these little angled ramps that then bring it into the main ramp or transfer mechanism on my robot. So if I run into a wall, I can hit this. It starts to grab those balls here and it is able to start kick it in. But you can see that it really does have to push it against a wall for it to be able to grab that. So if I were to use a much larger wheel, it might be more likely for me to be able to grab a ball in that corner without having to ram into a wall or something like that. Now, in terms of some improvements, you could change this. You could add in more compliant wheels. You may consider making using a more or less squishy wheel. You could add in more or less weight on this arm so that gravity is able to pull back down. Right now, I'm just using cable ties, zip ties, or zap straps to be able to hold these wheels in place. But sometimes they are capable of shifting. So you might consider adding more wheels. You also try a wider wheel as well, and that also might improve some of the things. Again, the main benefit here is that just having a little bit of squish for a compliant wheel means that your tolerances don't have to be quite so intense, and it does make things a lot easier. If you'd like to get access to the CAD files for this compliant intake, you want to make it yourself, you can consider joining my community down below. If you got questions about how this compliant wheel intake works, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. As always, best of luck on your next robotics project.